Welcome traders to another Tick Mill Weekly Market Outlook with me, Patrick Munley, for week commencing on the 27th of September. Dollar heads into the week, a bid on Friday, and to be honest, I'm a little surprised that it did not rally even more on a set of hawkish Fed dots that showed a tightening cycle way above anything priced into money markets. Highlights in the week ahead will be a host of Fed speakers attending conferences on both sides of the Atlantic. It may be difficult for them to surprise the market now, given that Powell made it reasonably clear that tapering will be announced in November, uh, completed next summer, and perhaps making the case for the first Fed hike as early as September 2022. US data in the week ahead focuses on consumer confidence, personal income, and September ISM manufacturing. In addition to a supportive Fed backdrop for the dollar, a fragile risk environment could also lend the dollar further support. The Evergrande debt resolution story is far from clear. Chinese authorities wish for Evergrande to resolve its challenges by itself. And there may be further twists and turns before a full debt restructuring is announced. We'll also hear more from uh, US Congress about the debt ceiling uh, this week. October 1st is the deadline to approve any stopgap funding bill. Though realistically, mid-October seems to be uh, more the deadline to focus on for the US Treasury uh, will have to start scaling back activities. In short, risk assets may struggle to find uh, equilibrium this week. So from a technical perspective, as the dollar index continues to hold the <coughs> 93 now as support, I'm looking for this extension into the uh, 94 handle. It's going to be a key pivot for the dollar. And I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns in this zone to re-engage the dollar on the short side. Certainly looking for a test of trendline support. And if we can get through there and move down into 9170 will be the next downside objective ahead of a test of the 90 handle. At this stage, only a close above uh, 9430 would suggest that the dollar is actually moving into an extended upside reversal. In the Eurozone, focus really is going to be on who will be the next German Chancellor. Monday should see the dust start to settle on the German election results, although it could take some time and much more horse trading until a new government is formed. The elections have not had much impact on the Euro so far. <coughs> Pinning a market reaction on the results is tricky, uh, but latest views suggest the left-wing government could be poorly received by the Euro, while a surprise CDU-FDP coalition would be well received. <clears throat> on the macro side, the focus will very much be on prices and what the ECB plans to do about them. Friday sees the release of September Eurozone CPI, expected to rise 3.3% year over year and probably trigger a fresh outcry from the ECB hawks. The week also contains many speeches from the ECB big hitters, including Lagarde and Lane, who will likely have to hold off the hawks. A more hawkish ECB story may be the best hope for the euro to defend the 117 handle this week. And from a technical perspective, still as we hold 117.60 to 117.80 as resistance, I'm looking for a test down into the equality objective 116.28 and uh, projected descending trend channel support coming in at 115.80. Watching for bullish reversal patterns in this area to set long positions initially looking for a test of descending trendline resistance at the 118 handle. At this stage, only a loss of, uh, a close below, sorry, the 115.70 uh, trendline support would be a significantly bearish development, opening the move to test 114.30. <coughs> uh, similar story really in Japan, it's going to be about who the new LDP leader is. Uh, September 29th sees the LDP leadership election. Uh, which, given the LDP dominance in Japanese politics, is effectively the race to become Japan's next Prime Minister. There are four candidates in the race, with the frontrunner seen as Taro Kono, the country's vaccination minister. Of the candidates, reports suggest Kono is the furthest away from Abenomics that triggered the big yen sell-off seen in 2013-2014. Given what could be another tricky week for risk assets, it's difficult to see how the, uh, the dollar-yen is going to extend further to the upside with the speculative market still very much short the yen. Uh, from a technical perspective, looking for an extension into the uh, 111.65 area, look for some profit-taking pullbacks there, but ultimately I'm looking for still looking for this grind higher to get a test initially of the uh, 112.50 with that 113.07 equality objective just above. At this stage, can't really uh, look to the bearish side in terms of the dollar yen until we take out 
uh, trend line support now back below 109.60. In the UK, uh, sterling lightly over discounted the adverse risk environment at the start of the week and managed to recover some losses after the Bank of England sent some hawkish signals as it announced policy uh, on Thursday. In particular, uh, two points appeared to have a more hawkish than expected tone. Firstly, the acknowledgement that some recent developments had strengthened the case for moderate tightening. Secondly, the fact that one MPC member, Ramsden, joined Saunders in voting against maintaining the same asset purchase target. The UK economy is still set to face a number of headwinds this winter, and the MPC still appears divided around the threat that higher inflation is posing an issue. In turn, it looks like the current market pricing of a February uh, 15 basis point rate hike seems a little bit too hawkish, as I think we probably don't see any hikes before mid-2022. This uh, is probably going to limit any further upsides and potential for sterling stemming from rate expectations. Incidentally, I think we can become increasingly sensitive for uh, sterling to data as any signs of weakness in the UK economy, and especially in the jobs market, could make investors scale back their views on that February hike. However, this should uh, not be a story for the week ahead as the UK calendar only includes some housing data and the final read of second quarter GDP. Given Sterling's recent increase in sensitivity to global risk aversion, I think income and use from China is probably more likely to drive the pound uh, in the week ahead. As we continue to hold the 137.60s resistance, I'm looking for a test of pivotal support at 135.60. This is going to be a key area. If we can see some bullish reversal patterns here, I'd be looking on the long side, looking for a test of descending trend line resistance coming at 137.50. However, crucially, if we do take get a close below that 135.65 uh, level, then I'm looking for an extension to the downside to the equality objective at 133.30 before we see any meaningful correction to retest this pivotal support zone as resistance. Finally, down under in Australia, uh, the Aussie really followed the swings of the sentiment around the Evergrande crisis quite closely and looks set to uh, do so in the week ahead. We should see a very similar script as there are no market moving data in Australia except for August retail sales numbers. Incidentally, as the Reserve Bank of Australia has officially frozen its policy until uh, February 2022, data in the next few weeks may have a somewhat more limited impact on the currency. Aussie remains really the most fragile of the G10 space to any spillover from the potential Evergrande default. And that is not only because Australia is the most China-dependent country in the G10, but also as the collapse of a real estate giant would raise further demand concerns in the iron ore market, which may well generate another sell-off in the commodity prices. The only positive factor really for the Aussie now appears to be a technical nature as markets are already extensively short the currency. Still, any uh, short squeeze is probably going to be short-lived in nature as the domestic and external downside risks continue to pile up for the Aussie. So as the Aussie continues to hold the 73.30 as resistance, I'm looking for an extension down to test prior lows at the 71.06 handle. And then as the uh, price support here at the 72.20 axis resistance, ultimately looking for a move down to test the yearly pivot uh, just below the 70 cents handle. At this stage, it would really take a close above the descending trend line resistance, uh, somewhere around 74.20, uh, to suggest that we have uh, another leg of corrective upside in play. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 27th of September. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.